Hey, hey guys, welcome back to the studio. Today in Zero Music Theory, I've got this coolest trick. If you've watched our video on playing three notes with Zero Music Theory, and what you really learned there was how to form a normal chord, uh, excuse me while I just click a button for a moment. Okay, we're good to go. All right, what we have here for you today is a way that you can take that basic three note chord and really color it up uh, in a way that you've heard in multiple recordings, and you only have to move one finger, and you don't need to know anything. And of course, later in the video, I'll, I will give you a little bit of, of explanation in, in terms of music theory. What did you just do? All right, so let's make sure that we're actually seeing this. Okay, in the last video, uh, and you should go back and watch uh, play three notes um, and, and make a song. And we had a few chords that we were using as an example in that video. Um, a chord is when you play three or more notes at once. So, uh, these were the ones that we used. And in that video, I kind of played a, a little bit more than just those chords, and, and, and it started really sounding like a song. Well, uh, the first thing that I was doing was um, I was using my left hand as a support single note um, below each chord, and we're going to be doing that today. So for our opening chord, if I'm look, looking at the group of three black keys uh, as my map, and I choose the center one, and I look to the white key just to the right of it, that's our, cent our, our starting point. And I'm going to do the exact same thing with my left hand. I'm going to say, okay, here's a group of three. Here's the center note, and I look just to the right of it. So these two notes are actually the same note. One's lower, one's higher. And when I form a chord up here, that's a great support note for it. So as I go through each chord, like the next chord would be here, I want to keep that same kind of mirror image happening down here. So group of three, I'm on the left side of it. Same thing here. Uh, and same for each chord in this progression. This is to the left of group of two. And this one is to the left of center in the group of three. All right, that's going to give me a little bit more support. What about the coloration? Okay, listen to this. Now that's similar to the example you saw me do in the other video, but what did I just do? Well, it works like this. Whenever I have a three note chord, and we've chosen it to be equally spaced, uh, like I play a white key, I'm not playing something, and then I play a white key, then I'm not playing something, and then I play a white key. It's like every other white key. Um, and that works almost all the time. There's, there's one starting point that this is not a great fit for, but for what you're seeing today, it all works. The next trick is this. Um, if I take a look at just this central note here, there's a built-in flexibility to this tone uh, that I can move just this one note down a white key. And watch, I'm careful not to move the bottom note, and I'm not going to move the top note, but the central note will move to the left one white key to here. And this gives us a little bit of an odd shape to it. And let me show you that on the second chord that I go to. And on the third chord. And the fourth chord. Now, what if I start normal, like you just saw me do? I play the chord considered normal, the spaced out one, and then I make the change to this sort of it leans left a little bit. It, it's kind of a little bit clustered on the left hand side. And I'm going to get and put the left hand back in. So I have like this now.
And I'm not doing anything rhythmically complex uh, to it. If I wanted to, uh, one of the cool tricks that we can use with any chord is I don't really have to play all three notes at the same time. I can kind of lean into them so they kind of roll into a position where I do hear all three. Same four chords. Well, the trick that you saw me doing at the beginning of this video was I would play the normal chord and then I would make that change to the central note moving it left and then with these new notes I would kind of roll it upwards before moving on to the next chord. So that would give me something like this. And that's a great way to set up the next chord. So here's the first two chords. I could continue through the third and fourth chord doing this. Now, the reason that there's kind of the flexibility in that central note to be moved down, uh, what you just saw there, um, there's an explanation for it in music theory, which I'll, I'll tell you what it is in a minute, but for right now, don't worry about it. Um, there's also a second way that you can do this, which is to move that, cent that central note, setting, move, instead of moving it down, move it up. So here's my central note, and it's going to end up here. And this is a chord that kind of leans to the right a little bit, um, and it's going to be a decent fit. So here's, here's the chord, like... And it's flavored a little bit differently. And here's the one that went down. Um, now, before I show you this on any of the other chords, uh, we do have four chords in our progression here. There's a catch. And the catch works like this. Um, we do have a, th a, a rule. It's not really a rule. It's a guideline. Music theory is... You know, they call it music theory for a reason. It's not music law. We can, honestly, we can do whatever we want. And <laughs> it's just a way to communicate those ideas. Um, but we'll call it a rule for now. The rule is I can move that central note pretty much anywhere I want. Um, but the rule is that I'm not allowed to crowd the bottom note and I'm not allowed to crowd the high note. So, if I look at a chord like this, bass, this happens to be an A, you don't even need to know it. Uh, the chord here happens to be A minor, like we talked about in our previous video. When I take the central note and I move it down to here, and you go, oh, that looks like it's kind of crowding the bottom note of the chord because it's right up next to it. It's really not because there's a black key, sorry, there's a black key acting as a shock absorber between those two notes. Um, so I'm, I'm looking at these two notes and I see this black key in between. That's all you need. Uh, that little short distance between um, our starting note and that black key, that provides us enough room to say, okay, I can move to this note without really saying I'm crowding the bottom note. All right, and the same thing is true with the top notes. If, if I decide to move the middle note up to here, again, I'm not allowed to crowd this top note, but I'm not. There's a black key hiding, sorry, hiding right in between these two. Little shock absorber right here, and that's all it takes. So if I decide to move the central note down, I'm safe. If I decide to move the central note up, safe. We're going to run into a little bit of a problem on the next chord, so I'm going to show, that's why I wanted to show you how it worked on that chord. Okay, now, you saw me do this, uh, this is our second chord, which happens to be F, and you saw me move the central note down, and you can see I'm not crowding the low note of it, there's a little shock absorber built in, but watch this. If I decide to move the central note up, I'm going to run into a little bit of a problem. And the problem is, 
there is no shock absorber between this note and the highest note in the chord. There's no black key between here and here. These notes couldn't possibly be any closer together, and that's what we call crowding. Now, there's a couple ways that we can deal with it. My advice to you would be this. For right now, just avoid it. Um, if, you, if you do play the chord, whenever there's notes right next to each other, it sounds like this, and you might like this, and you might not like this. In general, this is something that most humans go, oh, I don't like that sound. But it has its place, and people do use it in music. But listen to these two notes together. And even if I did it as part of this chord where I move the central note up, and there's that weirdness in there, if I'm playing all three notes, here's what it sounds like. Now, we try to avoid that as we're starting to use this technique. So the very simple way to approach that is, when I'm on this chord, don't move the central note up to that crowded position, you can just as easily choose downward and have a position that's not crowded. When I get to the, th um, the third chord of the progression, things kind of go more back to normal. And, and same with the fourth chord in this progression. It's really only that second chord that you can potentially have this issue with um, of the chords that we're using in today's song. So the first chord, I can go up or down without crowding. I'll go up. The second chord, I kind of have to go down to avoid this problem. And the third chord, I can go either way up, either way I want. Um, I'll go up. And I'm not crowding. And the fourth chord, I can go either way. I'll go up again. Uh, and then I'll change it up on my next pass, maybe. Here's our first chord, and I'll go up. My second chord, I'm going to accidentally go up. And if you heard that that kind of conflict there, that's the type of thing that we try to avoid. Um, it's not the only place on the keyboard that you can potentially have that problem. But your eyes will always tell you. Maybe you're coming up with some cool chord that's beyond what you've seen me teach here in terms of, you know, these are chords that can work. Watch for the crowding. If that central note ends up at, at, at the minimum distance from the bottom note or from the high note, you're going to hear that clash there. And maybe there's a time that that can pay off. Okay, in music theory, we do have a name for this. What you just saw happen here is called suspension, a suspended chord. And they mean it in the kind of in the same way that you could say, well, um, I, I, I drove my car over a suspension bridge. Well, how come it didn't just fall into the river? Well, it was suspended by big cables. Suspended really means to hold something up, like you wear suspenders and, and your pants don't fall down. That's what suspension means. And in a chord, it very literally means the central note of this chord gets held up so it doesn't get performed. So if my normal chord is this, as soon as I hold up that central note, the chord is considered suspended. In other words, it's not a complete chord yet. It's been held up. And I can replace what would normally be the central note here with a note down below where I would expect. But because the central note is not there, the chord is still considered suspended. Uh, or I could have moved that central note up from its normal position. Um, without getting too deep in the theory, all they do, and they love doing this in music theory, is they assign it a number. My normal chord, if I consider that I have five fingers and I'm really looking at like a little five note area, my normal chord, it's really the first note and the third note and the fifth note of this group of five. And so we would say the normal notes in the chord happen to be the first note, the third note, and the fifth note. Um, when I suspend the chord, I'm removing the third note of this group of five. And I'm replacing it with 
the second note of this group of five. And so I would call this chord right now A suspended two or A suspended second. Suspended means that I've removed the, the middle note, the third, and, and when I say second, it tells me what I've replaced it with. I've suspended the chord and replaced the third with a second. How about this one? Well, this is suspended as well, but I'm using, of this group of five, I'm using the fourth degree to replace it. This chord is A suspended four. Or sometimes you'll hear uh, people just call it sus. A sus four or A sus two. A minor, A sus2, A sus4, back to A minor, um, every Bon Jovi song ever written. And he's just suspending around. And the idea is you can reflavor a very normal chord uh, by moving the suspensions around. Elton John, huge. Uh, purveyor of playing these chords in suspended forms. Um, sometimes he doesn't even hit the normal chord first. He just goes right for the suspension. Uh, Billy Joel does this a lot. Um, is it the only thing that she can do? You can write a book this thick on music theory about things that she can do, but you don't need any music theory to be able to see that the central note can be moved around. And as long as you're not crowding the low note, you're not crowding the high note, you're kind of within the rules of how this normally works. And we did this all with zero music theory, and hopefully you learned what we call it, because in music theory we do like to be able to communicate our ideas. Well, thank you for coming to watch. I hope you got something out of this, and uh, I hope to see you again in zero music theory. Have a great day.